All right, guys, it is time for our Saudi Arabia problem part three, how to spot a Wahhabist. Now, I'm sure that throughout this video, I'm going to make some mistakes and I'm going to regret some things that I didn't say or some things that I did say. So I'm going to do the best that I possibly can. And I know I'm not going to make everybody happy in this video, but I'm going to do the best that I can. Um, now, in order for you to understand this video, you do need to go back and watch part one and part two if you have not yet. And I have those links down below for you. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump on in on how to spot a Wahhabist. Now, Wahhabism is an extreme form of Islam. It is the basis of all of the terrorist organizations that we've been fighting for the last 20 years. ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Taliban, Al-Nusra, you name it. A lot of it is stemming from Wahhabism, Wahhabist teachings. Those teachings are based in Saudi Arabia. And again, these are covered in part one and part two of this series. So it is important for us to understand that this is a minority group inside of Islam. Now, I know that our Western media focuses in on it a lot. We talk about terrorism a lot. And this is sort of our only real um, understanding of Islam, unfortunately, here in the West, is this the, the radical form of it. And this radical form called Wahhabism is not only dangerous for the West, not only dangerous for the world, but it's also mostly dangerous for other Muslims. Other Muslims who are not practicing Wahhabism are actually targeted more and more violently than any other group of people. So if you think terrorists are out to get you, you have no idea what it's like to be another, another Muslim. They are really out to get them. So this is important for... Uh, non-Muslims and Muslims alike to band together and to try to educate each other on the radical Islam called Wahhabism. So this would be very similar to, you know, Christianity is a big umbrella and underneath Christianity, you have various different religions that are Christian based. Now, for some reason, people don't seem to understand that if you believe in Jesus Christ, if that is a central part of your religion, that makes you a Christian religion. So some people were combating me saying that Catholicism, for example, or Mormonism, or, or, you know, various religions that actually do believe in Jesus as the Christ. A lot of people were saying those aren't Christian religions. And guys, those are Christian religions. Okay, <laughs> that's Christianism, Christianity. So uh, those various there's a variety of religions underneath Christianity, and not all of them are the same. I don't think you would say that Mormons and Catholics are the same. So you would say, oh, there's a lot of differences there, and you might even think one's weird or one's not weird or whatever. But that's the way it is also in Islam. There's Islam, and underneath Islam, there's a variety of different forms of Islam or religion, like sex, and they... Some are more extreme and weirder than others. Wahhabism is one of those. It's extreme. And it is, uh, it's not weird. It's extreme. It's extreme and it's dangerous. And it has been propagated by Saudi Arabia for a very long time. So um, one thing to say before we go into spotting a Wahhabist is not all Wahhabists are dangerous. They might have radical ideas and they might be sympathetic to radicalism, but they themselves are not dangerous to you. So think of it like a radical Christian, you know, let's say like Westboro Baptists, right? So they're the ones that blow up all the abortion clinics. Well, not every member, you know, of Westboro Baptist Church is going to be blowing up an abortion clinic, but they might sympathize. They might say, oh, that person's a hero. They might um, support it in some way, but the vast majority of people, even inside of a radical sect, are not actually dangerous people. So that's the first thing to understand. Secondly, people can change. So if you meet somebody who's radical, the best thing to do is to try to influence them with love and kindness and understanding, right? Don't come at them because if you come at them and you accuse them, then that's only going to make them more extreme. That's not going to convert them to your way of thinking. They're not going to all of a sudden see the light and say, oh my gosh, you're right. I'm an extremist. I need to change my ways. The only way you're going to change them is through showing them your humanity. So, um, those are important things to note. It's just really, really important that you understand that Wahhabism is a minority sect inside Islam, that the vast majority of Muslims you meet are not going to be Wahhabists. They're not practicing it. And also another thing to understand is that even though Saudi Arabia has been exporting Wahhabism all around the world, many of the people that are exposed to Wahhabism don't even believe it. So if they're going to the mosque and yeah, they're being taught all these kind of radical things, they're sitting there like, yeah, 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 you know, I'm just here because culturally, you know, my family's 
Muslim and I'm Muslim and so I'm here, but you know, they roll their eyes and they walk away. That's how most people in the United States are when they go to church. They go to church, they listen, they say, yeah, yeah, that was nice, okay. And then they move on with their lives and they don't actually practice what was taught. So it is no different in the Muslim community. And a lot of these Muslims that are taught some, uh, some Wahhabism that might be infiltrating into their mosques or into their schools or into the prison system here in the United States. We had a big problem with that, again, covered in part two, our Saudi Arabia problem part two. Um, many of them hear these things, they, and they don't even realize that they're being infiltrated with some Wahhabism. So there's got to be sort of that big understanding of this before we go into how to spot one. Now let's get into the meat. How do you spot a Wahhabist? First of all, the term Wahhabism is not something any Wahhabist ever will agree to. To them, it's an offensive term. So that's something to know right there. Now, any other Muslim, typically, now, one thing to also know is that not every Muslim might know a lot about Islam, right? Just like a lot of Christians, they might say they're Christians, but how many times in their lives have they gone to church? Have they ever read the Bible? Do they know anything? A lot of people don't. So you can't totally judge based on the reaction of a person. When you ask them, are you a Wahhabist? Some of them might say, I don't know what you're talking about. And they just genuinely don't know what you're talking about because they're just not that Muslim. Now, the ones that are, if they practice a lot, they read their Quran, they go to their mosques, um, and they're heavily, you know, heavily practicing. If they're not a Wahhabist and you ask them, are you a Wahhabist? Their reaction will be, oh my God, no. Those people are crazy. They're extreme, and I am absolutely not one of them. That is what most, how most will react to you if they're truly practicing, like I said, you know, minus all the caveats. However, if they are a Wahhabist, their response will not be, oh my gosh, no, those people are radicals. They might give you a couple of different responses. One response might be, there's no such thing. That's a key response. There's no such thing. So this is somebody that knows about Wahhabism, but then they're rejecting the notion that Wahhabism exists. Then it's highly suspect that they have been infiltrated with some Wahhabist teachings. So if they're saying there's no such thing, it's because Wahhabis believe that they're not a sect of Islam. They believe they are practicing Islam and they believe that everybody else, which is the majority of Muslims around them, are infidels and are not practicing their true religion. They think they're the only ones practicing it, and that is why they're so dangerous, because they believe that their mission in life is to spread true Islam around the world. And anybody else who's not practicing true Islam is an infidel. And if you're Muslim and you're practicing a different form of Islam, then you're even worse, because now you, you're practicing a distorted version. They give you a little bit of a pass if you are Christian or Jewish and you don't know any better, and then maybe they can teach you and convert you. But if you're already Muslim and you're practicing a distorted view or a perverted view in their mind, then they're extra harsh with you. Um, this is one of the reasons why Saudi Arabia and Iran have such tension between them, because Iran are Shia Muslims. They're not Wahhabis. Uh, you know, there might be a couple. There's always exceptions. But for the most part, the country is Shia Muslim. Saudi Arabia, on the other hand, are Wahhabists. So they've been practicing a very fundamental form of Islam for quite some time. Now, so one reaction might be there's no such thing. Another reaction might be, no, I'm not that. I'm not that. Okay, so then you can follow up with the question of, okay, so then what kind of Muslim are you? What, which one of the four schools do you practice? Now, in Islam, there's four teachings, four schools, four sort of ways of practicing Islam. And most Muslims will say, oh, I practice X, Y, Z form of Islam. Now, a Wahhabist might say to you, no, I just, I'm, I'm Muslim. That's it. I practice Islam. And so they're kind of keeping into that narrow, my way is the only true way. So that is one way to figure out if somebody's a Wahhabist. Most Muslims will tell you which school of thought they follow, uh, which teaching they follow. And they don't, they don't think their way is the only true way. They see others practicing other ways, and they're very open to all of the others. But it's the Wahhabis that are not. They're the ones that are very narrow-minded and say, nope, it's just our way or the highway, and that's it. 
Another way to know, so you, you kind of have to kind of ask these follow-up questions. So you can't just base your, oh my gosh, this person's a Wahhabist based on one, um, one question. You have to ask multiple questions. And even then, it's still going to be really, really difficult. The only way you'd really, really know is if you find, you know, ask them some real fine-tuned questions about what their beliefs are when some, you know, if somebody commits adultery, should they be stoned to death? I mean, you could ask them that question. <laughs> and if they say yes, then you're probably dealing with a Wahhabist. Um, but anything short of that answer, you know, uh, you, you can't really make an assumption. You can start to snuff it out and see maybe, maybe not, but you can't really make any hard assumptions unless the person truly is starting to tell you some of the really, really radical ideas. Now, um, so you ask them, are you Wahhabist? If they say, oh my gosh, no, those people are crazy, then you're not dealing with Wahhabist. If they say there's no such thing, then you can say, okay, uh, a follow-up question. Or if they say, no, I just practice Islam, I don't follow any of these schools, then a follow-up question could be, what do you think of Shia Muslims? Now, Wahhabis, they don't like anybody but themselves, but they really hate Shias. So their level of hatred that they, re that they react to Shia Muslims is what level of Wahhabist they are. Because like I said, some Wahhabis are not dangerous at all. They just might have, you know, some radical viewpoints, kind of like your crazy Christian neighbor that's just a little overboard. Um, you know, you've got that, that group. But in order to discover whether or not they're really truly dangerous, or even if they are that kind of radical group, right? If they're real radical fundamentalist and they just are really close-minded, it's like, do you want to, you know, you, you, you want to know who you're talking to, I think, when it comes to religion in general. So um, ask them about Shia Muslims. If they then say that they absolutely hate Shias, then you're probably dealing with a Wahhabist or somebody who's heavily influenced by Wahhabism. And um, finally, so trying to think if there's other real ways that you can spot a Wahhabist. It's very difficult to do. Oh, another way is that they might not call themselves a Wahhabist. So if they if they mention which school of thought they follow and they say Salafism, sal, sal, Salafist, sal, I'm saying it wrong, Salafist, Salafism, Salafi, something like that, then um, that is Wahhabism. They don't typically identify as that. They certainly will never identify as a Wahhabist but they might identify as a Salafist. And if they do identify as a Salafist, then that is actually a Wahhabist. But most of them won't identify as anything other than Muslim. And this is where it becomes really, really problematic for the vast majority of Muslims in the world and in the United States who are not Wahhabists, because if they say, I'm a Muslim, and then you hear this and you go, oh my gosh, you know, they're these terrorists, that's not, uh, that's not the case. I mean, they're just telling you that they're Muslim, just like a Christian tells you they're Christian. And then you say, oh, well, which kind? And then the Christian says, oh, I'm Lutheran or I'm Episcopalian or I'm Mormon or I'm Catholic or whatever, right? Um, same thing for Islam. But the problem is most people just don't know anything about Islam. They don't understand the four schools of Islam. They don't understand that there's uh, the different, even the, the, the two umbrellas. You've got Sunni Muslims and Shia Muslims. And then you've got various different schools and sects underneath those two branches. And Wahhabism is just one of them. So uh, try to do the best I can on this. I'm really nervous about this because what I don't want is for some lunatic to watch this and then go ask their Muslim neighbor, are you a Wahhabist? And their their neighbor really just doesn't know what they're talking about because they're not all that devout and they don't study it to this level and they're not, and maybe they don't even speak English. And so they're sitting there looking at you like deer in the headlights. And then you sit there and think, oh, I'm dealing with a Wahhabist and you label them. That is the last thing that I would like to have happen from this. I'm just trying to help you. But you know, I figure if you're already that kind of person, you're probably already that kind of person, whether you're watching this video or not, you're probably the type of person that you just think all Muslims are the same and they're all dangerous and they're all terrible. And, um, I don't know. I'm hoping that this will help open your eyes a bit rather than being so close-minded and narrow-minded about Islam. Open your mind. It is a it is actually a beautiful religion. I studied religion for a very very long time in my life. Uh, I a, a lot more intensely I've stud studied religion and read scripture more than the vast majority of people. 
And I can tell you that Islam is very, very similar to Christianity. Christianity, Judaism, and Islam are very, very similar. They just, they diverge in a couple of spots where historically they just didn't agree and they went in different directions. And by and large, it is, they, they're very similar to us. They're our cousins, essentially. And we should be more open-minded and we should learn more about Islam. I know I plan to. I plan to learn a lot more about Islam so that I can even speak more effectively about it. And um, I don't think there's anything at all to fear from any Muslims unless you're dealing with an extreme sect, most likely in the Middle East. You'd have to be over there. It's not going to be something you're going to encounter here in the United States, really. So it's not like you need to be really worried. I think I put all the disclaimers on this hopefully so that is how to spot a wahhabist for the most part it's not foolproof uh okay all right thank you for watching this was our saudi arabia problem part three again part one and part two are down below and uh there might be a part four actually that goes into how the united St how the west actually encouraged saudi arabia to export wahhabism in order to destabilize regions. Um, that's an important point to make that a lot of it wasn't just Saudi Arabia's doing. Saudi Arabia, yeah, might be an extreme nation where they practice Wahhabism, which by the way, is they're trying to change. The crown prince is trying to radically modernize Saudi Arabia and kind of do away with Wahhabism. Uh, and he, he's been pretty effective at it the last two years. But one big issue with our Saudi Arabia problem is actually the fact that the West used Saudi Arabia to export Wahhabism around the world. And I believe I will be getting into that in part four. Thank you so much for watching.